From the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest striving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, The Vision, Bill Fisher, their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicky Fisher, and our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered, soon-to-be millionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with us and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes and Training Team. Welcome, we are the Garage Heroes and Training Racing Team. We'd like to welcome you to join our extended team. Our goal is to help get everyone out there and racing their cars. Whatever kind of car, whatever kind of racing, really doesn't matter. We hope to show you that if you've ever had any interest in driving your car at or close to the limit, there's no reason you can't come out and give it a go. We hope to be able to see that everyone, even us, is able to do this. So come out with us and enjoy the ride. I'm the host for this episode, Bill. I'm Vicki. And I'm Alan. So for this episode, we're going to be going into what to expect when you're expecting. For people of our age, we, we know what that book means. But this is basically what you would see when entering your first race how the process goes, how things uh, transpire, kind of what the sequence is, and, and trying to get away from the intimidation that may be there. But first, we'd like to start off with what we've been doing since we last spoke to you guys. So, Vicki, do you want to start that off? Yes, we've been here getting ready for Turkey Day and company, but our company is now, which is now going to be at their place. We also had done a podcast with Three Pedal Mafia which you can find, which is just now released as of today. The Everyone Racers podcast. The Everyone Racers. So, so we're, I say, we're, the, we're the 101 podcast. They would be at least the 201, maybe the 301 podcast. Yes. So, and what else have I been doing? Oh, I have gathered everything to run the electric, except for the wiring, to run the electric in the trailer. It's all ready to go. And that's that's us. When you say you have everything, what would be on the list of everything? What's the first, second, and third thing? Of everything? Well, I ha I have all the lights. I have, I think they were the Cree lights. Some LED lighting, and correct? And I believe, yes, I have six of those. Yes, I have six of those. And I got, we have the battery. Excellent. Uh, the 12 volt. And now I exchanged the storage unit that was sitting on the, to um, the tongue of the cab of the trailer and I exchange that for a more rectangular box now. Excellent. So it should fit nicely. What is it with cup holders? Oh, what is this box made of? Is it metal, plastic? What are we looking at? Yeah, it's plastic. It's plastic. Okay. Plastic. I, I did. Yeah. I, I didn't go for this Dura plastic. I didn't go for the, the metal, the metal ones. Yeah. Well, those, so, but it should work. That uh, shiny diamond plate uh, aluminum can get a little expensive there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What about, uh, what about you, Alan? What have you been up to? Me well, we had we had to clean up the driveway a bit. We uh, packed up the uh, race truck into the trailer, minus the front bumper, um, just for just for a little extra fun. Uh, we actually tensioned up the door springs of the trailer door, so that was a, uh, a three Danvers boy activity. And after about a good solid half hour uh, and another fifteen minutes, we uh, we got that dialed in, so we can open and close the door to the trailer, which is super fun now. Uh, we got the truck in there. We loaded a bunch of tires in there and uh, got that closed up. And actually, I just changed over uh, a set of snows for a, a colleague at work right uh, at the end of the school day there. So that's what I've been working on. What uh, What about you, Bill? Well, I, I hauled said trailer and uh, it seemed like the one tire was a little low. So we're going to have to check on that before we go much further. I've been working on getting us ready for Atlanta. So a lot of trip organization taking care of the team change that we had with everyday drivers falling out, logistics, getting hotels, getting travel plans together, and then also logistics of the trip down to see Chris, Chrissy, Jeff, and Jim to work on getting the ombre, the bad ombre El Jefe truck up and running as far as the uh, exhaust goes, the fuel cell goes, and aerodynamic adjustments that uh, Alan's been working on, so we got to get those done. And then uh, spare time, I've been taking uh, Ross Bentley's Speed Secrets 201 course, which was actually quite good. I already wrote a, a summary of the 101 course on our website at garageyourswithtraining.com. And uh, 201, I haven't written yet, but it uh, it was quite good. And hopefully you guys will be able to uh, take it as well. It uh, helped me a lot. I hope. I hope. We'll see. Nice. So any goals coming up for this week, Vicki? Uh, turkey. Turkey, turkey, turkey. How about Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta? Yeah, I have to sit down and we have to do the track walk. 
online. Yeah, we had to do the video. We should have plenty of time to do that. Was there any videos out there? Did I miss something on that? Yeah, I've got one. I'll show it to you this weekend. Excellent. You know, other than that, still getting the house ready for ski season because the mountain, I believe, is opening on Friday. And I know the kids are getting giggity about that. And just finished wrapping up the porch. I've got a few more touches to do. And then we are ready for poker night out there and hanging out. So those are my goals. When are you going to start prepping for the trip? Actually, I'm probably going to start Sunday and start uh, cooking up that stuff and getting it ready for the freezer. And now that I have totally gutted the basement, I mean, I've been taking a basically an arm to every surface in my house and I have just been brutally getting rid of things. So now the basement is getting nice and fresh. So I now I'm setting up a place down there for all of the race stuff, the race gears, the bins, the totes. So I have everything in one spot now. And then uh, I should start getting everything ready, probably starting Monday. Let's make sure all those totes that we ship down are ready to go. And uh, since we're sharing with uh, Three Petal Mafia Camp Share, I think the, the meal prep is going to be pretty, not as extensive as it normally would be. Right, but we only have one more week before I leave because I have to drive down there. Oh, that looks like I'm going to be starting it this weekend. That would be a good plan. I like okay. That. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Alan, you got anything goals wise going on? Goals. Well, I think we're, uh, I am also wrapping up final destination plans to head down to Atlanta. Uh, as far as my goals, I guess my goal would be to fly to Atlanta. So get there. <laughs> That's goal one. Goal two is to it's tough, tough to drive from Connecticut when you're in Atlanta. Well, it's, you know, it, it's one of those things you work on it. So I want to get to Atlanta. I want to drive around Atlanta and then, you know, Get, get to the race and run through the race. That's what we're hoping for. I mean, my goal would definitely be no black flags for uh, me because I've, uh, you know, I, I've tried that before. It's all right. It's not, you know. You, you have experience in getting black flags. We'd like to cut that down a little bit. Yes. Well, I just, you know, I mean, it, uh, you know, I'm trying to make sure I'm pushing to the limit there, you know, when I'm spinning out the straightaways. It is what it is. You know, I, I just want to clarify the black flag is not halfway to a checkered flag. Oh, all right. Well, I was working. All right. Yeah, I thought. Okay. I wasn't sure because I figured the black flag, then white flag, then the checkered, and then we're, we're done, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah. I just want, didn't want you to get lost in there somewhere. So. It's a grid system. We're good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that was my goal to uh, to get to Atlanta, drive around Atlanta, and make it through the whole race and keep the car running and hopefully keep the car in one piece. Right? I'd like to, uh, you know, as far as... Apparently, Jeff had told us... What's that? Bulldozer. I said Jeff had had uh, told us about a nice Irish pub down there we should visit. Oh, oh, well, that's we'll have to put down. Oh, that was mental. Oh, it was anyway. Mental. Yes, mental told yeah. us. Put down the. Uh, yeah. Very Bill, nice. Bill, if you can put down the Google Calendar for me, that'd be all right. Then we're all set. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, say it's awesome. <laughs> I am the designated driver of our team. It. So. Uh, <laughs> so then, yeah. As far as the racing, I'd like to try to get some consistent lap times down there, and and you know have some fun with it, and try to get some. Uh, Get some good fun and keep the car in one piece. That's my uh, goals for nice. goals for Atlanta. I'm looking forward. Mm-hmm. Well, the only the only other thing I did, we have the weekend. We have the weekend work. So that's yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. And that yeah, Saturday. Sunday. Yep, we got to. Uh, I got to finish up the air dam in the front. We got to mount that fuel tank in the mm-hmm. back. Um, we're gonna do a little frame up for uh, the battery there, and we're good to go. Nice. All right, I'm trying to kick my boy down there too to help. Okay. Yeah, trying to get Liam down there. Are you bringing any other boys with you? Um, I'm not sure. I have to check their schedule to see what uh, what they have okay. going on. Still up in the air. Now, are you guys staying overnight down there, or are you guys coming back later on? I think for sure we're staying over Friday and yes. okay. probably right. Saturday. If we get everything done, Okay. we won't. Right. Well, very nice. This is our last chance to get it done, so we got to get it done. It's done. This is it. <laughs> It'll be good. Indeed. I'm very excited yeah. about our, uh, our new upcoming tweet to our design. Be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I am. It's a secret. <laughs> You've got to keep the gas in the truck. Yes, yes. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Slash That's me. right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Indeed. So- Indeed. Learning how to fly. So the bulk of the rest of the episode, we're going to be going on uh, what to expect when you're expecting uh, as far as a lemons race goes. Now, most of the different racing series will have different, slightly different uh, organizations and, and online sign-up procedures and everything else. But generically, they're all going to be similar. So 
Alan, what's the first step that you tend to see us going through in terms of signing up for one of these races besides making the decision to do it? Well, someone has to sign in and get an account set up with whichever organization. In this case, it was with Lemons, and we had to get a Lemons license, mm-hmm. right? I have to get a driver's license for a year mm-hmm. with them, which I don't think in any way it testifies to my driving ability. It's more just accountability, and this is a name and a number, and this is who this kid is. Did, mm-hmm. did you get a license? I did get a license, yeah. I don't know if that's Oh, a- then it has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with capability. Yes, yeah. yes, indeed. Thank Damn. you. So, <laughs> no. That's rough. <laughs> well, you know, it's tough out there. I'm telling you. It's hot, it's cold, windy, rainy, you know. So um, so you have to get a license. Sometimes all on the same day. Yeah, then you're going to want to pick a race that you want to go to. And then in this case, you know, we, say we picked Road Atlanta. So you're going to have to register your team and set up a team captain, I guess, as it were, and have team members, right? Because you need extra drivers and mechanics and uh, photographers. There's chefs. We have masseuse. What um we did we did what what yeah, what, oh. what 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 <laughs> thought, wait, wait, wasn't that in my rider? Didn't you guys see that? <laughs> that wasn't a masseuse you went into that trailer for. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, yeah, you know. Out. <laughs> Damn. Moving on. Uh, so you have to set up a team online. You have to have some extra drivers, right? So our team right now has the three drivers yep. signed up through Lemons. Uh, we have our license. We've Did we reserve a garage yet or is that not available? We're not sure. Not yet. In this case, most tracks have an option whether or not you want to camp there or not camp there. Yeah. So if you have any sort of camping facilities uh, or, or abilities, then you, you can look into that because that's a certainly a very convenient way to go. And let's see what else. Well, obviously, that's the registration part. You have to have a car that you hope is going to meet their tech inspections, right? What do you think about that, Bill? Well, I mean, the, oh. the, usually you don't have to worry about cars or races getting sold out, but certain tracks are more popular. Certain areas have more population density. The Laguna Seca race for Lucky Dog sold out in two or three minutes today. Ah. Not that we could go because it's in February and half of our team is either a teacher, a nurse, or a student. So well, actually more than half. So that's not on the list or our agenda, although we would love to get out there in the summer race out there. That would be fun. So you've got to do that. The other thing is when you sign in, when you register your car, you get to register your car number. Now, those numbers, in the case of Lemons, they're three-digit numbers. And in spite of it being 100-something cars, it seems like every car number that we want is always taken. So we signed up early and, and often. We were just like uh, Chicago voters. Well, now, hold on, Holly. I don't think you can say every number you would have wanted. It's only the ones you've tried so far. I mean, let's just be – right? Yeah. I mean, well, there's a couple more we may have wanted. We just didn't try. True, it. Yeah. true. So it, it's kind of a hassle to change your car number. So I, th- I think we need to, there needs to be a way to change that, but I don't know how to do it nicely. So um, at the moment, I don't have a solution. I just have a complaint. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. Indeed. Exactly. We'll file that one away. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We've got that taken care of. So <laughs> next thing you do after you sign up is what, Vicky? Travel to the track. When you get there, make sure you have your driver's license with you upon track arrival. Then it needs to actually be valid. Yeah, I'm going to let you do this process, Bill, because you're the one who usually signs us in for the tracks. True. I usually get there early. So mm-hmm. usually you'll get there first cars, get there usually before the track wants us to be there. So we end up, you know, clogging up the roadways and hanging out and making fun of everything. And so you get there, you sign up at the gate. Usually there's a gate preventing you from getting in. Once you're signed up at the gate, try to make sure you grab one of the schedules. They usually have one there. It tells you approximately what's going on for the weekend, you know, when the track's live, when the races are over. Uh, sometimes it'll tell you where you can park and where you can't park. But uh, the first race we went to, right. we didn't even have one of these. The second race, we didn't get one of those, and that's how we ended up winning the I Got Screwed Award because we thought the race ended at 4 and it ended at 6 or 6.30. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of an oopsie on our part, but, mm-hmm. you know, hey, we got hardware, so, you know, we're award-winning. Uh, <laughs> that's racing. right. That's right. You will get lots and lots and lots of wristbands, uh, probably up, upwards of five. Some are for race access, infield access, drivers. Driver, drivers get their own separate from everybody else. And it's really, it's just, it's to make sure that everyone gets something in their hand on the other side, because basically you're paying for each different event. So if you're there on a, right. you know, I have a, a pass to be a driver on the track. I need another pass for the mm-hmm. practice day. 
I need a pass to be on the, the premises as it stands, just to be in the property, not just right. a driver. So you'll, uh, that's three right there. And then if there's other events or other things you're doing, there you're going to get tagged up. And that's where you, you those are critical because those get you in and out of the mm-hmm. facility and wherever you need to be. So don't lose those. Hang on yes. to those and be careful of those. Usually you'll get one for the transponder if you run. Right. The tra- exactly. So then we go in and we set up camp. You have infield camps, outfield camps, and garage stalls. So if you're going to go ahead and um, want to do uh, the garage stalls, you'll have to do those online early. There's a registration date that opens for those. You have to keep checking the website for when it when they start releasing that, and they will most likely fill up pretty quick. Um, then you have the infield camp where you put your, your trailers and your tents, or some of them are, are outside of that. There's, you know, various points on sometimes on the infields where you can go, whether sometimes you may end up on the concrete, sometimes you may end up actually, you know, on the grass. So it all depends. And then we have Friday is when you should show up for your races. Some people travel in Thursday and they stay locally in a hotel or something or a local campground if you have your trailer with you. And then Friday, uh, when the track opens, usually in the morning, you get in there, you get yourself set up real quick and as fast as you can, do a once over on your car. And then after you do all your sign up and your paperwork, you get your car on Friday onto the racetrack for practice. It is very important that you do that. You will have practice inspection. You'll have practice inspection before you get out. Yeah, you practice inspection and then, you know, get the car on there. And then what is it next, Bill? Practices between, you're usually the first one out. It's usually nine to noon, then they take a lunch break, and then from one to four or five. Mm -hmm. You get a lot more done in the morning because uh, Lemon's tech inspection occurs in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Uh, So so that's kind of, you've got to have the car on the track and getting inspected, which is very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Haven't gotten our cars in two spots at one time yet. We have, we're still working on that. Right, so, Alan. That's next next upgrade. We need the cars. To to be we're working out. We got. We got. Try the, to make sure you get everyone out on the racetrack, especially if you haven't been to this to the track, or most especially if they're if this is your first time ever racing. It's really important that you do that, so you kind of get a feel for what to expect. There's not going to be a ton of cars out there. A lot of people are still filtering in, so get out there early. It's very important, and usually. Also, is that uh, the driving is a lot less aggressive, so it's more understanding the track and understanding your car, getting a feel for your car, you know, not, you know, trying to do fast laps, which is crazy on practice day. I mean, you could try it, but that's not the point. And some levels, you're testing out the cars, too, right? You're making sure everything's working, you're making adjustments, you're... Uh, tweaking and tuning, fixing exactly. the last bit of things and, and getting it set up just right mm-hmm. so that... And you're getting to do it without a thousand people around you that think they're racing for the corner. So yes. the difference between a practice of Friday and the racing day is that just the sheer numbers, right? You'll be able to go into a couple turns and not have anyone around you. Whereas during a race, it's very rare that you go into any turn without someone around you at some point. Right. Exactly. Now, this is when things start to get really, really hairy because there's, there's a lot of stuff happening at the same time. Whether it's it's your you're in the garage, you're getting your garage set up, you're getting your camp set up, then you got the inspections, and then you have the driving. So there's a lot of moving parts at this point for all of Lemon. So, but once you get the feel of it, it, it becomes a little bit easier. But it is very confusing. So make sure you have your schedule in hand. You may have to send people off in different directions, but that's just in the name of the game, especially in the beginning. And it, it's critical that if your car is in street legal, if you need to test it, if you need to check some things out, you need to do it on this day. Because if you can't drive a car in the street to test certain things, this is your only chance to make sure it's ready to race. Right. So that can be critical to make sure you have a successful successful weekend. Exactly. There's only so much you can do in a driveway. Mm-hmm. Yes. Indeed. Mm-hmm. So what happens next, Bill? The one thing I, that we didn't cover is on the practice day, the track entry, track exit may be different than race day. And we got into this, where was that? Out. Thompson, I think. Was it Thompson? Yeah, Thompson, they had yes. us going in and out at a different spot. So that was a little confusing for some of our newer drivers. I, I can't say new drivers because we're all new drivers. Mm-hmm. So our, it, you know, enter and exit was different. So the procedure could be wrong uh, or different than it is on Saturday and Sunday, because usually Friday test is controlled by the track, although at Atlanta it's going to be controlled by lemons, and then Saturday, Sunday is lemons. So be careful with that and make sure you find that out, especially if it's your first time at the track. 
So after you're doing the morning testing and, and hopefully some afternoon testing, that's usually when we start getting into the lemons tech inspection or whatever race series you're going to have to start doing their tech inspection. So what goes on in tech inspection so people are prepared? I do know that, you know, if this is going to be your first time race, you definitely want to get there early because if you get there late, you may end up either having to work on your car or you might have to, you know, run around and find things that you think you had, but you didn't. So for definitely for new time racers, you know, be there early, but you, on your tech inspections, you're going to be bringing all of your equipment in a bag. Do not wear it, (laughs) but in a bag, take it up to the, um, to the tech inspection places. They're usually in in the same space where they're going to be checking the cars. They're going to have one stall, a drive in, drive out to check your car. And that's also where you're going to be finding all your other information. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to bring all of your helmets. What we had found when we first got there, especially with the uh, with the helmets and our Hans, is that there was kind of like a little gadgety thing that was was kind of off. So uh, where they actually hook was was different. So they might, if you have a new helmet, they're going to address that with you and they'll show you exactly what to do. Um, you have to go up and register for your transponders. Uh, these transponders are actually attached to the car itself and you will get a band for that also one per car that's going to be at a separate booth and then another does a transponder do what does a transponder do bill okay it's a little electric gadget that triggers when it goes over the line so it's your timing for the lap so it allows Mm -hmm. you allows you to actually do laps otherwise Mm -hmm. your car can go round and round and round and round and you get zero laps so right and um you're able to uh, attach that transponder to your phone is that right? Because there's some some re- some way that you do that where you can actually check where everybody's places are. There's an app for the phone called Race Monitor, and you can track pretty much all your cars. I think the app is free, but the the cool stuff is like five dollars for a year, so mm-hmm. um, it's well worth it. And you get to track all your friends and um, your car, and you can see lap times every single lap. So it tells you how badly you're doing, and. Uh, <laughs> We're how good you're doing. I haven't had that happen yet, so. <laughs> All right. We're usually fighting off. We are. But we're working on it. We're working on it. And some of the the, sa- the safety inspection stuff. Yeah, the, the safety inspection, you're going to bring your helmet, all your gear. It has to be an F4 F five. Well, it, it yeah. Make sure you check with whatever you're looking to do. In our case, I believe it was SFI five. Um, but they need everything. They want socks. They want uh your boots. You need to have a full suit. Um, whether it be one piece or two piece, you need to have gloves. Uh, you may or may not need to have the little scarf that goes under the helmet and the helmet all have mm-hmm. to be brought along with a Hans device or something along with your car. Yes. So that's, uh, you know, it's quite, quite a few things there just mm-hmm. to check, get the personal safety inspection yes. done. Yes, right. And then, oh, and, and then also the when, you're, when you're done with your safety equipment and all that check, they're going to give you a sticker for your helmet. And that just says you're good to go. Right. So then you do your transponders, which is a separate booth. And then you go to to sign in for for the lemons. I guess you that's that's where you get your your practice band for all your drivers, your driver bands. And then you gotta get the lemons re- sticker and the swag for the car. You're gonna so. register your team, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. So they give you this this whole th- along with your paperwork. You'll get this this big like ten by twelve um, sticker. A couple of them probably. A little ones. You'll get a patch for the race. And every race has its own patch that you can put on your suit. And also you will get a, a printout that you tape to the inside of your roll bar that gives you access to the racetrack. If you do not have that, you will not get on the racetrack. So it's all going to be in this packet. Make sure you, you apply that. Bring your inspection sheets with you. Very important. Have we had any incidents with that, Bill? Uh, not that I'm willing to claim at this time. <laughs> so you bring your but what could happen is that you could have you know you could have left your sheet back at your camp or your your garage and then all of a sudden they yeah. can't check you off you don't get your stuff someone has to run back and get that piece of paper bring it back make sure you have all the boxes checked all your ducks are in a row and everything's rocking and rolling yeah bill usually has this bright folder that he he carries around with all his stuff in it usually bright orange so we automatically know it doesn't get lost with everything else so that's good. And then is that when we go through the car inspection next? Is that yep. tech? Do car inspection and all this at one time. 
Okay. So car inspection, bring your sheet. Oh, and then there's bribes. Bill, you want to talk about bribes? I, I don't need bribes. We do everything by the rules and follow every every dot and T. We don't bribe. Uh, yes, but there are others. Some people, yes. what they do... Uh, I've heard if of you, others. If you yes, had an extra others. peanut butter and jelly sandwich, perhaps, that was super yummy, you could deliver it to them. There's always the standard coffee and donuts are welcome. Yes. Um, any sort of adult beverages in large quantities right. are acceptable. Um, this, this is the part. This is the fun part. This is going through tech is where you, if you are theming, this is where you do it. You don't drive around in your costume. If you have a costume. Unless it's fireproof. Unless it's fireproof, but probably not. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is this is where you would you would theme your car, pull your theme together, and you basically get in line. You bring your bribe, whether I mean we've always brought amazing chocolate chip cookies, alcohol. They usually get tons and tons of alcohol though. I remember I think one of the guys, they were the Italian, they had a little car, they did an Italian uh, theme and they brought hoagies for the people in the inspections. Now, when you do this, it's almost as if they kind of go light with you if you have any penalties, you know. But you also get a, on your car, you will get a a stencil spray painted on there for whoever had done it. So, you know. It's, so you're saying they tag you. Yes, they tag you. So they know if, you, if they've been bribed. And it's all fun. But food, alcohol, suitcase full of SpaghettiOs, opened of course donuts coffee hot chocolate you know just whatever they're they're always they don't judge it but it's always nice gifts and usually they're handed out on party night if they have party night paddock parties or whatever they're or they're distributed you know throughout the pit areas and this is where you would wear your costumes usually there's a line through tech you definitely want to get there again if you are a first timer get there early because they will most likely be things wrong with your car and you may have to get those things straightened out as soon as possible. And you want to make sure you have enough time. Some people I've seen people actually working on their car late into the night, sometimes into the morning to make sure that it can run on that day. So I'm not saying that could happen to you guys out there, but there is a possibility that you will probably be putting in some long hours if things go badly. What else? Some recent areas that they're uh, focused on, you should always be focused on. Is going to be the safety of your car. So, how is the uh, the roll cage fastened? Is it does it meet the specifications that they require? Of course, for us, we're looking at the twenty four hour lemons website. They have a fairly clear instructions as far as exactly what they want, which is not exact, which is perfect. Battery must be super duper tight and tied down without any chance of any issues happening. If there happens to be an issue on the track, like you're sideways or upside down or backwards or Sideways and upside down and backwards, mm -hmm. or you know what I'm exactly. talking about. As far as tires, right? Um, you, what you know, what else do you think there, Vic? They're going to check uh, usually on your uh, practice times or whatever. They're going to make sure that your car does not leak fuel and gas. Yes, yes, <laughs> fuel, gas, <laughs> yes. water, anything. Uh, for us, our tires have to be a, a specific treadwear rating, and I believe that's either 190 or higher, um, so they're not too grippy. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't like it when you bring your fifties out there and get, mm -hmm. get, uh, get a little fancy out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, your gas and fuel has to be of the proper type and variety. Uh, you have to have something to, to shut the car off. So they want to know if your engine, if something gets stuck, like a throttle stuck, they want a quick way to just shut that mm -hmm. motor down. So they, we have a kill switch, which is uh, very simple to operate. So anyone can just immediately kill the motor right away. And they, they do test that mm -hmm. right in the garage as part of safety. Uh, the fire extinguisher and suppression systems are have new regulations for 24-hour lemons as of mm -hmm. 2019. So I believe it has to have a, a manual operator, some sort of upgrade to the fire suppression system to pull cable. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's more than just having a bottle strapped to the car. Right. Um, that's no longer <laughs> enough. We have to have right. a better system uh, to get that going. Uh, your radiator. You can't have anything loose rolling around no, in your no, car. No, no, nothing. Like you think of just picking up your car and like turning it sideways and shaking it. Like nothing can be falling out. Because mm -hmm. when you're driving, you certainly could be in any of those positions. So nothing can be loose, nothing dangling. Everything has to be strapped down tight. This is a race car. You're going to be driving around pretty fast on those tracks, uh, hopefully. And you want to keep yourself safe and keep everyone else safe. So the radiators, they won't let you run any antifreeze because if it does leak from your junk heap or our junk heap or anyone's fabulous race car, then it's very slippery on the track and that's very dangerous. So none of the, the series and most any track will let you run any sort of antifreeze in your car. 
uh, which in these colder climates, we're in the Northeast here, uh, we're getting in toward winter. It's been very cold outside. So if you have a car that has just water, you have to make sure you drain it out. Um, or if you had a block heater, you keep it nice inside in your house, nice and warm uh, above freezing, you're fine. But otherwise, you do have to be careful. And it's easy enough. You just drain out the, the water that's in there, and then you're good to go. And, you know, you can't have – Yeah, they do – What's that? They do not mess They do not mess around with the roll cages. That is very serious. Dog They're going to check the one. scene. <laughs> Dog bark number one. <laughs> okay. They do not mess around with the roll cages. They will check your seams. They will, your weld seams, make sure that they're complete. They will check to see if there's any crinks in it, crinkles, or if it is an oblong bend in it. So they are very, very serious. But if you're going to have your roll cages installed and you're going to go that route and not buy a lemons car for your first time out off another team, and you're going to go ahead and have this done. If somebody says they're professional, make sure that they're auto professional, that they know what they're doing with race cars. And not just say, hey, this guy knows how to bend metal. They, they don't mess around with that at all. They want to make sure that you are safe. Safety is critical here. I mean, there's uh, you got a bunch of pretty amateur people out there doing some pretty fancy stuff and, uh, at speed with, with hot, fast race cars. We don't need anyone getting caught on fire or uh, better or worse. We just want to get around the track and have some fun. So safety is always mm -hmm. critical. And that's really what drives most of what they have going on here. As far as a lot of the inspections, as far as the fire safety suits and making sure cars safe with a roll cage, nothing dangling, nothing loose. You know, uh, for our series, we have to have a racing seat. Uh, you have to have a five point harness uh, in the car. Uh, so all those things and the seat belts have ratings and, and they have uh, expiration dates that have to be checked. They have to be properly adjusted. There's a right way to wrong way to strap them and loop them and, and, many different possibilities for design so you have to check those and make sure they are are all safe and up to code mm -hmm. so th i think with lemons and with other racing most of the cars they can look like daily driver cars or they can look like race cars or they can get a little more we'll go with exotic or extensive what kind of variation have you guys seen alan as far as the cars that are out there it, it's pretty surprising because you see grandma's oldsmobile Everything that goes right i right. guess someone got a hold of and they decided it was a really good idea to put a fancy paint job and a front splitter on and run that thing pretty hard and you see some pretty crazy whacked out concoctions that someone came up with it was like wow i guess i guess that seemed like a good idea oh man it's going right by me <laughs> so and, and a lot of cars they do yes i really do like that one acura with the the plants the the vine that grows around it <laughs> they, that's just really cool i like seeing that every time it goes by on um, the back of the car it looks really nice with the, the the plants growing out it's got no hatch on it i think it was an acura integra oh yeah it's the one it's yeah i think it was the wine the rosé wine rosé all day yep absolutely Rosé all day. day. Props to them. Yeah, yeah. Some of them actually also look like they're just about ready for the junkyard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they've been hit a couple times. They're pretty dented. They've just been hit with a can of spray paint just for the number on the side. Nothing, nothing fancy. They're just out there to race it. And, you know, some of them are done up really, really nice. Some of them are even newer SUVs, you know. Just, again, if it's your daily driver, make sure you got to ride home. And there's just a lot of... <laughs> I, I was really impressed with a lot of creativity. I really love that one. Uh, I think it's a mid eighties or nineties Japanese two door sedan, four door with all the, uh, the googly eyes glued on it. That one is just awesome. Just a picture mm -hmm. a car with all different size. You know, those little, I don't know what you call them. Those little eyes you stick on with your crafts and projects and stuff. That can, oh yeah. yeah. It was covered with like those little plastic, uh, wiggly eyeballs. Right. <laughs> you put on pictures and things yeah, yeah. yeah. so think of like yeah i think that one was really cool and just really cool people doing some fun stuff with adaptations and get just getting wacky with them as far as making them uh out to you know there's the flint water department race car there's just really cool themes mm -hmm. as far as what you're going to see with people right. doing it and some are you know pretty pretty serious as far as getting some speed down some are just pretty serious about having some fun um i do like the one i think it was a volkswagen that had a uh a very tall vertical exhaust pipe. I think it was like 10 to 20 feet tall. And then, you know, they had to cut it down a little bit for one of the garages to get through, I guess it was. But you see that thing racing around with a 10 foot tailpipe sticking straight up the back with a flap on top. That's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've seen so many great themes. I think I've seen a van. I think he was, I don't think he was racing it, but I saw a van. It was a plumber van and it literally had this, it had to have been a 15 foot plunger sitting on top of it. It was, yeah, yeah. I've seen a unicorn car. It looked like a little Miata. Was that what that was? Yes. And then I think it was a 
Taurus. I cannot be too sure, but it was a team that they decided they were going to go with Mario, Mario Kart, and they did this car up as the blue shell with spikes all over it. That cracked me up. <laughs> and the whole team dressed up as Mario characters. I was sitting awesome. there going, I think we were in the cold pit, the camp pit, and Yoshi walked by. <laughs> it was hysterical. And then I, what else was, yeah. I think that's the point with this too, is that there is so much to see. You know, I mean, yeah. you want to make sure you, you know, don't just, just hang out in camp and chill with your friends and have a cold beverage. Take a look around. Plan on physically going and lapping the, the parking lot and see when the camps are. I know when we were up at New Hampshire, we had a great time just walking around seeing what the campers are. We almost came home with a new truck and trailer, right? And it, was, it was right there. Can, it's right. It was right there. It's right. It Nobody can drive. Sale. I mean, if we had a couple more dollars in our pocket, we'd always say, you don't need a CDL for that. Come on. <laughs> I can run through 19 gears. Don't you worry about it. I can't. I can't take yeah. it on the Taconic though. Well, that. Well, yeah. We'll work on that. That's fine. We'll get mm-hmm. to. I, I got you. No, the I cars. Got, the car- cars are very, very creative that are out there. But then again, the cars and the not all of them and are. the campsite. Yeah, right. And some even even the ones that weren't. We spent uh, what 10 minutes talking to that one uh, group of young kids that were what camping in their trailer, right? He had customized. We talked to him about all the lights he put in and how he can run snowmobiles in there. Mm-hmm. Or he, he camps right in his trailer mm-hmm. while he was working on his Volkswagen yeah. that was broken. So it was, it was just as interesting talking to the person that wasn't themed. Right. Out, just, just to see the different parts. And, and that's, uh, I mean, that, that's some of what, some of what you like to do as far as snooping around camp. Isn't that right? I there, do Rick? snoop around camp quite a bit. And I get a chance to actually go for a walk and now for a bike ride. Now that we bring bikes, you yes, just yes. To go out and see what everybody's doing and see how fun their cars are. And, Honestly, if you're going to, you know, if you have the time and you've already been through pit and you're basically kind of sort of ready to go, if you could spend a little bit of time in the tech area and just see what rolls through or take a walk down there during their inspections, you will be thoroughly entertained. Bring a camera. The cars are are themed out. The people are themed out with their cars. It's hysterical. You know, it just makes me chuckle every time. (laughs) It does indeed. So the, the paddock areas can be quite large. You know, we, we can easily have well over a thousand people at any of these races. Any ideas, any things you've seen for getting around at, at Thompson? We were close to a mile away from pit entrance. So Yeah, definitely. If you can bring a bike, bring a bike. Although other people have other creative ideas. I've seen little ride-ons. I've seen people build ride-ons. One looked like, I think one was a take on a scooter, but it wasn't. It was like a scooter with a seat. And then it was pulling something else, and it it, was, it had gadgetry like all over it as he was riding this around. And then they get very creative. They do. Yes. It's like it's almost like they take all their spare parts and throw an engine on it, and they they build something and ride around with it. <laughs> you know, it's very very clever. Just just to get around paddock area, kind of show up. You know, daddy ride ons is what they are. <laughs> uh, well, one's got a dragster on. Top. Yeah, one has a dragster on top. That's right. So there's lots of creative characters and that sort of thing uh, all about camp. And each track that you're going to go to is going to be set up differently. So your experience, you know, in the same series at one track versus another can be very different um, just because the the layout of the size of the track, what they have as far as uh, garages and all that sort of good stuff. So the the way to move around, it, it can be critical at some point. But you're definitely going to want at least some bikes. Some people bring little, uh, little scooters, little motorcycles, uh different things like that as far as pit ride-ons mm-hmm. uh, to drag your toolboxes around or have a little cart pulled behind, the, hey, this, pulled behind that mm-hmm. to get your fuel where it needs to be. Yep. And that sort of Mopeds. thing. Mopeds. Golf carts. I've never seen the golf carts. Oh, no. The, I've seen the golf carts, but the golf carts, oh, yeah. I think, are usually at the track. I don't think that they actually bring them. Maybe they do. But I've seen mopeds, uh, Vespas. You know, I've seen those. Oh, yeah. uh, little tiny, little tiny um, uh, motorcycles. Pit bikes. You know, seen those pit bikes, yeah. So just something to get around, you know. Or you could build it and if you're that creative. Be be careful with the uh, younger set; they do need to be safe in the paddock area, you know. Yes, there is there is a hard speed limit that you you have to go through the pad. If not, they they do not mess around with that either. You do not go racing through the camp areas. And for any sort of any, well, yeah, because sometimes the the garages are actually part of the pit uh-huh. lane due to you know one way streets and that sort of thing. So anything right outside garages is where race cars are coming through. So you got to watch out. You cannot leave little kids dangling around uh-huh. and that sort of thing. So you definitely have to be careful of that. So 
moving on, you're going to have different things in the car, right? So we're going to have like some telemetry, right? We can, we have a, uh, a little timer we're going to run up in Atlanta that'll keep track of how many laps we're doing and lap time and that sort of thing. You're going to have in-car radios that are optional. If you want to try to talk back and forth, some teams will even just put those little handheld radios they have and then just use it as a beep tone back and forth. Um, rather than actually even be able to talk, they can just beep back and forth um, with those cheap little ones you can buy. You know, let's say they do five miles or six miles, but that's in a you know perfect uh, environment. You know, you're racing on a racetrack with a bunch of other cars. So that's some of the options as far as communication back and forth. And you can always just use, you know, have, pick a certain spot on the track where each driver knows they look to see if some of their teammates is there with the sign tells, hey, pit this lap or, or you know, something like that. Or you, they'll be there two laps ahead of when you're supposed to come in. Or, you know, as the driver, you're going to beep on the radio the two laps ahead of time so they know you're coming in for a, a pit change, whether it be a driver change or that sort of thing. Within the cars, you know, you can set up a GoPro if you want. That's always nice to see what's going on to, uh, you know, for, for viewing later in case there's an incident or that sort of thing. But, you know, you got to be careful and not let it be a distraction of the driver so they're playing with that instead of actually racing and then put your car into the wall or tire wall or whatever it is or whatever it could be. But, uh <laughs> Yeah, showing off for friends later for your favorite video uploads. So that's what you have going on in the car. So for a race weekend, Vicky, what else could be going on? Typically, you got a Friday practice, then you got race day, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, everything we've pretty much gone over with is pretty much mostly on Friday, right? All that that's that just we just discussed. Now we kind of start moving things into Friday night. Sometimes things kind of get a little bit looser on Friday nights. But they, they really don't, I mean, I, I know part, they, they do a little bit of relaxing and partying on Friday if they do. Not so much because everybody's getting ready for Saturday. But now Saturday night, there are occasions when they have particular people that show up and, and with probably a small donation, you they'll, they'll either bring pig roasts or pasta and, and meatballs. Uh, I remember the last one that we had gone to, they there's a particular group that they travel in a bus and they've converted into to travel with their car inside the bus and they rest in it and they sleep in it. They've converted the thing or another one with a trailer, but you know, they just do this whole spread for everybody and they had a pit fire out there. Everybody's hanging out. They're having beers, you know, BYOBs type of thing. So they'll have those dotted around. You can kind of walk around also, you know, on occasion, you might have a person kind of wheel through with another kind of particular gadget loaded with, I don't know, some kind of cocktail-y thing, serving up drinks as they're walking by. So that kind of happened. No, wait, hold on. Hold on a second. Hold yeah. on a second, Vicky. You said you don't know. It, I, it wasn't a gin and tonic. They were pretty that, yummy. It was, <laughs> it was a gin and it was, tonic. It was about three gentlemen that were... On a, I don't know, three, four, six wheeled cart with some sort of cooler and ice uh -huh, and all... you different options of which That's beverages right. you were having. It was um, a rolling I wasn't bar. even interested. I still <laughs> had one. It was delicious. One team at the last race, uh, since they weren't able to have a car, but they were going to be here anyway, they brought this fabulous spread of, it was like burritos mm -hmm. and a whole Mexican. It was crazy. The line, yep. there was at least 20 people in line when I got there. And there was still some when, mm -hmm. when I left and we were all just, uh, you know, they almost fed the whole, yep. I'm sure they fed at least a hundred people. Easy. And I, I remember the one when we had gone to New Jersey, I think they actually had a pig roast. I mean, yeah, they had a pig roast going. Right. So, right. yeah. So these things kind of happen, you know, some of them are, you know, you, you have to make a small donation for, but you know, the, the whole point is, is that Friday night is a very festive night for lemons so if you have the energy and you haven't been beaten up too much from the day you know stay for a while get to know everybody at lemons you'll really really enjoy yourself everybody's so very friendly oh do we did we discuss the donations for mm. that um that take place the charity that usually takes place at lemons not yet okay so that that also takes place you can actually do that anytime, but you know, I think they have like Alex's lemonades there, or they might have one for muscular dystrophy. There's, there's always a, everyone that we've gone to, there's been a, a person that has a charity. And I think at one point they raised like, was it like $18,000? I think. It varies. Yeah, it varies. So, but that actually can help you in your penalties also, if you donate to that too. So anyway, so that's what all takes place. Anybody want to add anything to that? Am I missing anything for the Saturday night Sounds before good. we move on? Yeah? All right. 
So I'm going to go ahead and let Bill discuss the hot pit area. Okay, so the, so the hot pit area is just like where you watch racing on TV. They have the pit crew and they do their, their driver change or they do their gas change and tire change. In Lemons, the only three things you can do in the hot pit area is fill the fuel, do a driver change, and maybe add ice to your cool suit cooler. Nothing else. No playing with GoPros, no nothing. Get in, get out, get going. You must be also fully suited. Everybody everybody who goes through that gate must be fully suited, visors down, helmets on, gloves on, everything's on. So do not do anything else. Do not play, mess with a GoPro. Do not do anything except driver changes, getting them suited in, strapped in, getting the car full of gas, and have your fire extinguisher. Anything else you need to do, you have to go to the hot, to your paddock area or your camping area. And that's where you can mm-hmm. do any working on the cars. That's when you can do your adjustments. That's when you can change a tire. That's when you can adjust your seat belts if they're not set up right or fix your broken down hunk of junk, whatever it takes. But you can't do that in the uh, pit area. They don't want that done. It's just quick driver change, gas change. That's it. Some tracks you will be allowed to do fueling outside the hot pit area sometimes you will only be able to do it outside the racing time you will not typically be able to do any fueling in your paddock area while the track is going while the track is live while the track is hot in certain tracks you're able to do you are able to get gas from the local uh, gas pumps but again it varies from track to track but don't plan on doing that miss anything Vic? no i I think the big the big thing is, is we can't stress enough that you you may be able to go ahead and put gas. Well, you probably will be able to put gas in your car before the race starts. Um, on like on, a, on a, yeah, sometimes on a Friday night. But once that track is running, you're not allowed to have any gas in the pit area. Gas, gas can burn. Gas can. All the rules change. Not all the. Yeah, all the rules change. You need to. It's a different set of rules you have to run by. So if you are going to fill it up, make sure you throw the gas in Friday night mm-hmm. when it's safe, clean. And there's no issues and not try to think, oh, I'll just do it in the morning. Well, listen, everybody else is doing everything else in the morning. And along with that, you want to get mm-hmm. ready to line up in the morning too, right? So you don't want yeah. to be having to waste time gassing up and, and that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing is practice may have different rules than when Lemons takes over or when your racing organizer takes over. So if they say, yes, you can do that or you can take off your gloves or your visor doesn't need to be down mm-hmm. on the hot pit on Friday, that is not going to happen during the race. So there are two different sanctioning bodies. If the fire chief is working the pit crew and he says, yeah, go ahead and do it. Lemons doesn't care. AAR doesn't Mm -mm. care. It's not up to the fire. It's up to Mm -hmm. the governing body. If it's the lucky dog series and they've got rules, if somebody says, yeah, you can do it. And they're wearing a fire suit and they're the the chief of fire. It doesn't matter. That's not allowed. Mm -hmm. Now this is one thing that they're very much a stickler on. When it comes to safety, they're not messing around. So that's the only reason why we're stressing this, the, the gas situation, because it can be a little confusing. Okay. Okay. So moving so, on. Uh, we've been to a few tracks. Which tracks have you been to? With the Lemon Series, we I, my first track was at Thompson in Connecticut at the end of August, a nice warm racetrack. And we had some warm days and rainy days. How long it's is that track? Under two miles. It's a mile and a half, something like that. But yeah, the 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 portion that we run, I guess, is the road course there. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And then we just went up to New Hampshire. So it was my first time to New Hampshire uh, Motor Speedway, I believe it is. And we run, I don't know what the name is, but the road course there. How long was that, Bill? I think that was right at two miles or, or just a little bit above it. Well, it depends. If you take the shortcut that Biggie takes, it's only like, you know, three quarters of a mile. Oh, wait, whoa, hey, whoa, hold uh, on a second. Uh, 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 hey, hey, it's not, it's not all about her. Come on now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so in New Hampshire, that track was really nice. I was, uh, I had heard about it when I was in at Thompson, and that's what really got me fired up. And uh, I immediately pushed bill to uh commit to two cars up there at uh new hampshire Uh, because i was like wait a minute they said they got big uh, garages there that sounds like a lot of fun it it was tough to get me to do two cars but you know that was uh vicky you did a couple (laughs) other tracks didn't you well i did thompson i did jersey is jersey tom no thompson was in connecticut i did the jersey race i did the new hampshire race and now we're going to go down and do the atlanta yes road atlanta so we did njmp's thunder track 
So that there's two tracks there. So we did one of those so far. And each of the paddocks okay. is slightly different. Awesome. Each of the pit areas are slightly different. Sometimes there's a lot of electricity. Sometimes there's not. Sometimes there's a lot of garage space. Sometimes there's not. Uh, it really depends track to track, race to race, series to series. So, so that's part of it. So pay attention, uh, lay out the land, get there early, that sort of thing. Is that what you yeah. Because you, you need to know, hey, listen, I might, if I can park my trailer close enough to that garage, I can run an extension yep. cord. Then I don't need to run a generator or hope that there's a hookup because there may not be a or hookup. Or if you have, because you may just have a, a muddy uh, parking lot, you right? Know, yeah, be, that are also plugged in. It, it could be tough to get all your all in one spot. I mean, ideally, you'd like to do that. So it's it's a uh, come early, right? And uh, stake your claim. So yes. So once we're at the lemons, we've done our we've done our Friday testing. We've got our paddock set up. We've got our garage set up. We've got our cars hopefully set up. We've got our drivers ready to go. Got your camp set up. What what do you guys think about lemons race itself or the race starting itself? It usually starts with tech inspection, but what what goes on after tech inspection? Well, on Friday nights, right after the track closes for Friday, they're going to boot you off probably about probably about. 334, I think. They're going to require you to immediately, almost immediately, head over to the safety meeting, especially for new drivers. Just so you, uh, all the new drivers get to know all the rules, and there are quite a bit of rules, so you definitely want to be there. You want to get all your new drivers out there so they fully understand what to expect on that track. And it's never a bad idea to have your seasoned drivers go there as well, just to yeah. hear the same story again, just to reinforce, hey, what we're all about. What's this race series? What are we focused on? Hey, make sure you look out for this or that. It's never a bad idea for every, all the drivers to go to those meetings as well. But it's critical for the new drivers. But on Friday nights, it's usually better for the new ones because it's a longer meeting. Now, the, the meeting that you're referring to is usually on Saturday morning. Right before, yeah. Right. It's a shorter version of the meeting. It's a quicker version. And it just, that is usually... You know, not so much for the season drivers. All Everybody needs to hit that meeting. So everybody knows to expect all new announcements will be happening there. Any changes that has happened, any new entrances that have happened, that's when that's going to take place. So definitely get out there. So that meeting is uh, for new drivers is Friday night, usually four or five. They'll start going over a few things, local rules, track rules, try to make sure that in our case for lemons, uh, you don't want people out there driving at 10 tenths or 11 tenths. You want to drive in there uh, just to be safe um, and then there is a mm -hmm. safety meeting in the morning both saturday and sunday uh, what usually goes on at those the safety meeting in the morning is going to tell you something specific for the day if in one case they move some cones because they saw a bunch of jerks kept doing this or that uh, they'll put some cones or, or move or change the track physically from from one day to the next so maybe there's rain overnight maybe there was a sewage leak overnight something hey there's water over here watch out for that we changed up the entrance or the exit or, or what they're focusing on is, as far as being very careful about something. Hey, make sure you don't cross this line when you're coming back onto the pits and that sort of thing. And make sure you look for these flags here or there. Don't pass under yellow, those sorts of things. And they will explain all your flags and what they yep, mean on absolutely. that meeting also. So what do the flags mean? Well, you're going to have certain flags on the track. So the, the one thing that's going to stop everything is going to be the red flag. That's pretty much shut your car down uh, right where you are. You're going to have a black flag, which is typically directed at a person. Call that the Allen. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so then they'll, at some places, they might have a board with your number and they'll point at you or they'll yes. wave their flag determinedly at you and point to say, hey, you, you're getting this flag. Um, that's what they've done for me anyway. And that means that they want you to come in and, and talk to them a bit about maybe something that happened on the track that you may or may not be aware of. Or you may or may not know is a problem, but they may want to talk to you about some sort of problem you're gonna have a yellow flag which which means caution so during a yellow flag you know you're not gonna be passing anyone slow down don't be a jerk basically get in line behind whoever's in front of you and and don't go crazy just be very careful you know it may just be waving they sometimes they'll have two yellow flags which i believe means a full course yellow and they may have a yellow with a white which will mean that there's a uh, service vehicle on the track. So the tow truck, somebody's broken down somewhere. So watch out for that. There's not just race cars. You've also got uh, some safety personnel out there. So be very careful. A green flag, of course, means go, go, mm -hmm. go. Let's get out there, get some racing. And let's see the the red. And don't forget the checkered flag. The checkered flag. That's when we win because <laughs> um, we crossed. The that's a stop. Yes. That's a stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so you, there's going to be a red 
with yellow striped flag. And what that means is that there's something on the track. It can be that there's oil on the track. It could be my back bumper. It could be a muffler. It could be a tire. It could be um, <laughs> it anything. It could be the link from your transmission. <laughs> it could be part of my transmission. Yeah, it could be anything out there that is, um, that's out there. So let's see. What other kind of flags do they have? I don't think there was too many more. But as far as the reasons why you could get a black flag, is going to be anything for that's safety related. Uh, if your tire goes on the dirt anywhere, you are going to get a black flag. If you're, you know, as if you leave the track, it doesn't matter if you're going slowly because you pulled off to check something, whatever, um, you're going to get a black flag. Uh, if you're passing under yellow, uh, if you're driving dangerously, you're making contact with other drivers, you're just getting it a little too loose, they're worried about you, they're going to bring you in. Anything else that they see, because you've got track personnel around the track, the flaggers, that are watching what's going on. It might be that you really drive fast and you just hit that right-hander so hard the gas pours out of your gas tank. If there's any water or gas or oils or anything or, or tremendous amounts of smoke coming out of your car, they want to come in and make sure you're safe and you're not going to hurt anybody else. When you are flagged, you must immediately report to where you had your inspections done on your vehicle the allen always right so there's going to be the texas the tech inspection lane yes. where they welcome you they're so friendly there um, <laughs> and they just want to talk you know and and it's it's very nice uh it's a really nice place there and they say hey what's going on and you're like well i mean i was going a little too fast and that sort of thing and sometimes you know it may be the case that that they got the wrong number or they didn't really see what was going on. So they could come in and they'll say, hey, wait, um, did you hit anybody? No, you didn't hit anybody. All right. Uh, did you spin out? No, nope, I didn't spin out. All right. Did you go off track? No, no. All right. Well, yeah, maybe, you know, whatever. Why don't you come on over here? Just kiss this gnome and we'll send you back down the track and everything's good. Um, you know, just in case there was, you know, no harm, no foul. Um, Thanks for stopping in. Alan. And uh, down the road okay. you go. Um, Alan. So Alan. That, that, what's that? That wasn't a gnome. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah. That wasn't. Oh, I don't. There's no pictures, so I don't really remember. It was dark. I don't know. All right, Bill. Known penalties and punishments. Oh, there's there's thousands. Um, <laughs> it it is whatever it is at that time. Whatever whatever the judge wants, really. I mean, you are you are literally in some cases bent over at his discretion or her discretion. <laughs> I've seen people get tied to the top of their car and driven around a paddock with a loud speaker Bullhorn. Screen, and saying how they're a terrible driver and they drove unsafely and they apologize to the entire paddock. I've seen them have to put together a jigsaw puzzle. I've seen them have to pronounce the lake. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen them have to, they get a uh, set of keys and they have to unlock a certain mechanical design. But by a set of keys, I usually mean like several hundred keys. I mean, it's it's craziness. It's, you know, it, uh, some of them have to do a Bob Ross painting. Some of them, you know, go watch some of the Lemons videos. They're, they're quite entertaining in their creativity on how to mess things up and how to get sure that basically they're going to waste your time for a half an hour or more and uh, if they can do that creatively they will and if they can't do that creatively they'll just say you're parked it, it, they're, they're very very imaginative and it's sequential right so you might get uh, 15 minutes and then you come back again and you've annoyed them for a second time on a nice sunny yeah, Saturday the so they're going to make you sit for 30 minutes or 45 or depending on however long it takes you to fix whatever they think is yep. uh, you know and it doesn't matter appropriate if, you know, for whatever needs to be if, done uh, somebody in your group takes their glove off in the pit crew on the hot pit and you get pulled in it doesn't matter that you didn't take off your glove one one for all and you, you get a yellow flag for example your car does your your team is then so responsible um, when that, you're right? when you are out there yeah. uh, going back to the flags just a little bit the first couple times especially in practice ideally but especially when you're first out there on the track try to make sure you you identify every corner worker and every flag stand so that you see these things because the, the most likely cause of you to get a black flag is passing under yellow. And if you don't know where the yellow flag is, it's awfully difficult to not know that you passed under yellow because you didn't see the yellow. So that's that's pretty common, especially your first few drive for first few drivers. I did fine with that. I was always very safe while I was driving. I just want to make sure I was very clear on that. I was there. I was never cited for passing under yellow. I mean, others might have been. It certainly wasn't me. So I just want to make sure. In order to pass under yellow, you must actually pass somebody. So that's why it hasn't happened to you uh, yet. Right, right. Because I was being safe, right? I was making sure I didn't the pass track. anyone. 
under yellow. Yeah. Yeah. At all. He must know them very well. Indeed. Okay. Uh, the other thing that you need to pay attention to, and and it's really going to take a lot of your time, is the other cars. Now, we we drove in New Jersey. There's 140 cars, and the track is, I think, 2.3 or 2.4 miles. That's a lot of cars. Um, and first time out there, it doesn't matter if you think you're Mario Andretti or Mario Kart. You are not going to be one of the faster cars. You are going to be one of the slower cars. And in spite of your ego, in spite of your impression of your driving skills and talents, you aren't probably going to be one of the faster ones and you will be driving looking at your mirror more than you look out your windshield because there'll be more cars going by you than you going uh, around turns so uh, it's it's going to be a little intimidating the first time out there so be careful yes indeed and the thing is that there's a lot of other cars around you so it, when you are racing it's very it can be very scary it can be very distracting depending on what sort of drive you are if you're always looking in the mirrors and you want to make sure you're watching out for them um, you're going to get very off of your game, if you will, by, by watching your mirrors. And it's critical that you do watch the mirrors. You want to know what's going on around you. You don't want to be a jerk and cut this guy off that's flying into the corner. So you want to make sure you're safe out there and, and you know what's going on. And, and if you know your car happens to be throwing large um, Ghostbuster-style plumes of smoke out behind you, you want to know that too. You want to make sure you <laughs> don't oil up the track. But uh, and, it, and it is important to be able to communicate to the other drivers, too, because if you see that they're coming behind you and you know they're going to pass you, you can give them the point by, which can be either left side, right side. Um, so they know, hey, that's the line I'm going to give you. It's a really good idea to communicate to those other drivers and just keep everything safer so that we don't have to have any incidents, any contact on the track. Yeah, you just want to you want to be consistent and predictable, even if you're not fast. So the point buys tell them where you want them to go. Or tell them where you will not be, and those those are uh, greatly appreciated. And, and you know, it's kind of an etiquette thing. You're going to be passing, uh, having people pass you, so make sure to give them a point by. And one consistent point is much better than a bunch of dashes. You know, don't keep waving your hand. Don't you know? Just give them one direction, nice, consistent, nice and strong, nice and clear, and they'll, they'll and go by, there and they'll appreciate that. Right, by placing your car predictably. You know, if you're coming up to a sharp left-hander and you immediately run your car right to the right, hey, you're taking the outside line. If you move right to the left, you're taking the inside line. So make it obvious to those that are streaming by you as to, you know, what your intentions are, um, even if you're not pointing by. Yeah, and you don't have to give up the racing line as long as you're telling people, hey, I see you're faster than me. I know you're going to pass me. Pass me on my left or pass me on my right or pass me wherever. And that is that is the nice thing about Lemons is that even though we may not be in first, second, or third position, we still don't necessarily have to, you know, seed all, all racing line and, and give up everything or whatever. You know, like we're racing too. So they have to be careful. We have to be careful. I thought of a lot of the turns as just being two lanes. All right, there's an the inside and outside line. And obviously... The racing line it varies differently on every turn, but you always just want to make sure you're leaving either room on the inside or room on the outside and not, you know, be, be swerving all over the track. So that's just one idea that you can try to think of while going out there and just give some place uh, some room. Certain parts of each track are going to have their own places that are an issue, right? So there's a big long straightaway and all of a sudden these turns, so everybody gets bunched up. So you can have, uh, you're going to have large numbers of cars, first of all, and then a whole bunch of cars all of a sudden trying to get through one or two turns. Um, you're going to get some, uh, not like a caterpillar effect, but, but bogging down some traffic where no one necessarily has the right of way and they all want to go faster. So you get four or five cars wide and then all of a sudden they really only one or two cars can fit through. All right, well, something's got to happen to either cars are going off track or people are contacting or something's going to happen to get through the, the mess, if you will. So you got to be careful. So this, this is wheel to wheel. There is a lot of cars out there. Sometimes there's, you know, 140, 150 cars. I, I think there was one race where they were over 200 cars. Um, than as low as like 30 or 40 but the the thing is this is at least for lemons or for some of the other endurance races one turn one lap you know even one day doesn't really matter one hour it's endurance so if you can make the pass clean or if you can let them by cleanly it's better for everybody one pass one line one lane one lap one day one hour doesn't matter it's how many you do over the entire race weekend that can be 10 20 30 hours just, you know, don't be dumb. It's, it's supposed to be fun and you're supposed to have a good time and don't give it up for the sake of getting past or passing a single car. It doesn't matter. This is endurance racing after all, so you really have to get your time in, right? The more laps you can get in in a certain amount of time is what matters, not the 
fastest lap doesn't necessarily win the race. You can't win the race in the first half hour, 45 minutes. You can lose it there, <laughs> but you can't win it in the first hour and a half. So it's critical that you maintain and realize that, hey, listen, this is an endurance race. Let's get all the laps in. Let's keep running the full time and then see where we go from there. Yeah, I think the uh, the smallest number of laps I've ever seen is probably in, it's still in the upper 200s, maybe 300 or so. So what does one lap really matter? I mean, even if you drove tremendously fast for the first half hour of a race, what do you do? 15, 20 laps versus 300? You're not doing anything. So just relax. Have a good time. So we do this besides personal gratification and improving our skills. What, why do we do this? Is there a reason we do this? Anyone? We just do it just for the fun. Why are we racing? Well, I, th I think the racing is fun. The theming is fun. Uh, getting together in the crew and the crowd, is, is a, it's a good atmosphere as far as that goes, I think. I like getting the cars going. I like it, the engineering side of it. I like the racing side of it. Um, going fast and having fun, making some noise out there. You know, it's just a, it's a it's a lot of good fun. What about you, Vic? What do you think? I do enjoy the racing. I would say I I kind of get giggity on the uh, the creativity of everything that I see. I mean, I, I I really like that. I do get a rush when I'm racing. Just doesn't seem like I've been on the track very much. <laughs> but uh, that's why I do it. I I I'm not there to win, not yet. <laughs> well, I'm there to learn. You have achieved your goal. You are not yes. there to win. <laughs> Yes. Uh, the, yes. I 100%. What do you mean? No, you already did win. What are you talking about? You came home with hardware. What? What do you mean? You already did win. So we did win the trophy for the I Got Screwed Award. It's not the award you want to win. It's just the award <laughs> you're able to win. Yes. That's right. We are award winning. We're not bragging, but I mean, we're pretty good. famous. Not at all. <laughs> racing, racing team. Uh, even if you do win, I think the, the best quote unquote the best prize is usually uh, a few thousand nickels so <laughs> that's not the reason we do this it's like, you know we're not going to get signed by roger penske we're not going to formula one we're we're barely able to go around our own racetrack and driveway that's not the point the point is to to go out there and try to do your best and have a good time and uh, you know we've made a ton of friends at the races we have uh you know some some pretty close friends and some other people that you know, I'm horrible with names, so I apologize to everybody. But, you know, I know what your face looks like, and uh, we're working on it. But uh, the, the big thing is the, the friendliness of everybody. Everybody seems to, to really have a good time and, and share the passion and, and enjoy the time. And, uh, you know, where you finish is where you finish. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, there didn't seem to be any uh, negative competitive rivalry there. Hmm. Um, all of it seemed pretty good natured as far as, you know, hey, you need something that's going over. I know in the one... The Rosé all day came in broken on the hook. We, well, I was over there with the floor jack helping get that thing off the tow truck so we could, you know, get the pits open and get her back out there, get her racing. So it was, you know, it, it's just a good community environment. I, th I think people race hard during the race. You know, they're not overly aggressive, but, you know, definitely racing hard. But in between the race, in the pits, they'll do anything to help anybody else because it's no fun winning or beating somebody because they broke. It's more fun, you know, having a bunch of people out there and passing people. And yeah, and, and the competitiveness, you know, in, in, in this type of series, you know, we have three different race uh, categories. So there's A, B, and C. And then, you know, you don't necessarily know who you're racing against because it's against laps. So, you know, once a, a five or ten laps or an hour goes by, you don't necessarily know if that person's got more laps than you or not. So if they passed you once, that just may have been a fluke or whatever. You don't know. Like, you're not going to see the same person passing you a lot. And obviously, if you are, you're not racing them. So there isn't that aspect to it. And, you know, that that's a little different concept than what some people may be used to. But it just means it's a lot of good fun. So you're not going to have that person really just trying to cut you off, whatever they are. Hey, let them go. And uh, and away we go. So um, that kind of brings us to the end. I think we covered just about everything. Did we miss anything, guys? Except for cleanup after the race. They uh, want you out fast. Minor <laughs> yeah, No. You don't have a lot of time. So get, when, get your stuff to, together. Yeah. Quick when the race early. ends... Everybody's coming off the track. It's probably about a half hour before the end of those meetings start to happen. Um, the award ceremony, and after that, I mean, it is a, it is a massive dash to get out of there. Uh, I think at Thompson, I think we had to be out at seven, but the race ended at five. You want to have a yes, right? You want to have a very strong exit strategy. They want to typically close the the race. Uh, at seven o'clock and that means the race facility so the, the gate out the door they want closed at seven not they're kicking you out of the nice heated warm garage no 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 you got to be driving your trailer out so 
uh, you know, if you're a good camper at all, you want to have a good exit strategy. If you can run that hot car, that's running nice right onto your trailer, strap it down. So it's ready to go. And, you know, throughout the day, hopefully you've been moving your other stuff out so that you yeah. can get out the door on time. Yeah. Uh, Sunday, Sunday's a big work day, especially like in the paddock area. Make, make sure all your, your supplies and your meals and everything are just relatively simple because you don't want to be messing with, with all of that at the end of the day. You will be tired driving home. You so will be exhausted. Seriously. Yeah. Make sure you're safe. If you have to stop along the way, make sure you do that. Um, don't don't push it when you're trying to carry all your junk behind you in a trailer. Dangerous. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's uh, that's the end of the race. Do we miss anything? I think we're okay. I think you just you you missed the the hopes and prayers that you got through a nice safe race. Everyone was in good shape, mm-hmm. and the car came back, went right back on the trailer, just like you took it off. Except, you know, exploding some awesome memories from, of your racing for the weekend. Or if you had some damage or whatever, then you're you're scraping up the pieces and collecting the parts and putting it back That's on, right. and planning for your next race and reflecting back and seeing, hey, what did we do good? Mm-hmm. What did we do bad? What can we make better? What was yeah, awesome? absolutely? What do you think, Bill? So that was our episode. I, I think that's that's pretty much it. I think, um, you know, we tried to give a brief introduction to what to expect when you come to a race and what, what you should look for and what you should try to be on the guard for. And, and you know, hopefully everybody liked it and, you know, let us know. Uh, we probably will do uh, separate episodes on several of these sections as we're going forward. And if you have any questions or anything, please let us know. Uh, we try to answer them all. Uh, so far, there's only been one, so that was easy. And if you want to hear more, just let us know. Anything you want to hear, we'll be there. We're on Instagram at Garage Heroes and Training. We're at our Facebook page, which is Garage Heroes IT, because in training didn't fit. And our website, where we do a lot of articles and we have our podcasts, is garageheroesandtraining.com. So with that, hope everybody has a great time. We're going to try and get ready for our next race in Atlanta. We have a uh, large work weekend right after Thanksgiving. So Alan, make sure you eat enough food. We've got some work to do. I will be well uh, rested, of course. It should be fun. Absolutely. Trip to Fan's a wonderful thing. Indeed. And uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out and listening to us. And if you made it this far, again, you deserve a sticker. Come on out with us and enjoy the ride. Thanks, everybody. Bye. All right. Thank you. Never pass on a yellow. <laughs> the line. What's the line? When well, everybody argues about the line, but mm-hmm. the line varies. I don't. And it really, it really depends on. You don't want to get into a, Well, I had the line, or who's got the right to the line, or do I give up the line to the? You know. Make an informed choice. <laughs> don't wreck your car. <laughs> Whose line is it anyway? (laughs) The line. Whose line is it anyway? Well, it varies. (laughs) Uh, Are we almost ready to do this? Sure. I'm fairly fairly good. I am, I think um, I'm good oh oh you can also talk about how many cars are usually on the track and what to expect and and the the process breakdown or the three levels so vicky you've heard the uh what's that car that's up for sale bill what's his name super grover the super english grover. thing so i heard super grover super grover's up for sale and that's right around the corner it's like in between us really it's like the oh no it is it's right over there in um Beacon, New York. You go right across. It's right at the Hudson River on 84. Mm-hmm. This is where this. Super Grover. Super Grover. Enjoy the ride. Thanks, everybody. Hi. All right. Thank you. No, no. Thank you. No, thank you. No, no. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you. <laughs>